Hello, my name is Harold Hafton and welcome to Archaeological Minecraft. I'm a former archaeologist who enjoys playing Minecraft and thought it'd be fun to combine the two. In today's episode, we'll be talking about an ancestral Pueblo village I helped collaboratively build on the Archaeo SMP. What's the Archaeo SMP and who did I collaborate with? Let me explain. The Archaeo SMP is a survival multiplayer server hosted by Archaeoplays that I'm a member of. And if you haven't checked out Archaeoplays channel and like both archaeology and Minecraft, you really need to do that. Link in the description. This server has a super cool community of Minecrafting archaeologists, former archaeologists such as myself, as well as history and archaeology enthusiasts. As far as the collaboration, I joined the server at the same time as another member by the name of Viz, who's a super talented and creative individual. Our bases were next to one another, and between them was a pretty stellar and unique natural Minecraft village. And so Viz and I decided to get together and build out the uniqueness of this naturally occurring Minecraft village and use archaeology and exoanthropology to tell a story through a Minecraft build. Wait, what? I hear you saying? Did Halfdan just say exoanthropology? Isn't that the study of aliens? Yep, that's right. And this shows just how creative Viz is. Here, check this out. While my base is mostly geared around building historical and archaeologically themed builds, Viz has taken a different approach on the server, which I think is awesome, and so I want to shout it out. You see, Viz is playing on the server as an alien, and over here near my base, you can see Viz built a little observation outpost where my base can be studied and the details noted. Viz even went so far as to put all the notes about me and my builds in a book that can be read in this outpost. It's like anthropology, but from Viz's perspective, I'm the alien. I think that level of storytelling is just so cool. It taps into what I think Mojang is ultimately going for by adding archaeology into the 1.20 Trails and Tales update. The point of that update is to explore the world through archaeology and other newly added features and create a place where you can tell your own stories through Minecraft. And that's 100% what Viz is doing. Now, why am I telling you all this? Well, understanding that helps explain this collaborative village and the fusion that Viz and I brought to the build. Now, as I fly over to the village, let me just say that like most builds in Minecraft, this build isn't 100% completed. And frankly, I don't think it ever will be. I imagine between Viz and I, we will continue to tinker with this village, add things, remove and change things, but that said, it's at the point that I felt it was good enough to share with you all and to tell the story of the village with. When Viz originally found the village, it spanned the top of this crater-like valley. But look at what's down at the very bottom of this valley. It's an amethyst geode serendipitously located at the heart of the crater. With that background in place, let me set the scene for the story of this build. Imagine, if you would, this amethyst geode is really a meteorite from another planet outside of this Minecraft world. This meteorite plummeted through the atmosphere and crashed into the ground right here, leaving this huge crater in its wake. The nearby villages drawn to the meteorite found a village in the crater left behind by this collision. They built this village by carving their houses into the stone and rock that formed the very walls of the crater. The inspiration for this were the Pueblo houses carved into the rock walls and canyons in the American Southwest and places like Mesa Verde. I'll get to talking more about ancestral Pueblo Native American culture in just a bit, but first let's continue with our story. Over time, the village grew and developed, but what they didn't know at first but were to discover in time is that the meteorite was no mere asteroid, but rather an alien power source. Those aliens followed the geode to this world and started to observe the native villagers. Eventually, the two groups started coming together and the villagers learned to harness the power of the amethyst geode and its power crystal and started running power and energy conduits to their homes, thus the two cultures merging into one. So, now that you know the story, hopefully what you were seeing and the fusion between the two cultures makes sense. We started the build with the original ancestral Pueblo-inspired village. I mentioned both the Pueblo culture and what is probably their most famous site of Mesa Verde earlier in the video, 
And so here is some quick background about that. The ancestral Pueblo culture dates back from around AD 100 to AD 1600 in what is now the southwest of the United States around the states of Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and Utah. There are a number of different phases of that culture, which I won't go into depth, but in case you're curious, they range from the late basket maker two and three periods from AD 100 to 750 through the Pueblo 1 through 4 periods, which date from AD 750 to 1600. It's in the Pueblo 3 period, which dates from AD 1150 to 1300, that the culture utilized cliff dwellings and the famous sites like Mesa Verde date to. I want to be clear that unlike other builds of mine, where I attempt to make a one block to one meter replica of the historical or archeological structure or site, I've made no attempt to do that here. Rather, I've used Pueblo 3 sites as an inspiration to develop the cliff dwellings in this Minecraft village. In reality, the cliff dwellings like Mesa Verde are way more massive than what I have built here. And while I've copied the terrace-like structure of their buildings in this build, some of the structures in real life had dozens and dozens of rooms in them, whereas my largest house only has a couple of stories and just a couple of rooms. The Pueblo III culture came to its end and the real cliff dwellings were abandoned around AD 300. Archaeologists think this may have been caused or that environmental factors might have contributed to this outcome. In AD 1276 through 1299, there was an event called the Great Drought that affected the whole of the West of what is now the United States and caused crops to fail and had a massive effect not just on the cultures in those areas, but many plants and animal species as well. Okay, enough with the history lesson and let me continue to talk about the build. Once the ancestral Pueblo inspired village was created, we built out the other areas such as the alien's power crystal which hovers over the central meteorite amethyst geode. You can see the three observation towers that soar over the village and allow the aliens to watch over the village and observe the natives. At the base of the crater, there's a lovely river that runs through the valley, as well as a couple of gardens, one alien and one from this world. Also at the bottom of the crater, the aliens built a little science lab and a small area where they could store supplies and park a little vehicle. I may end up changing that vehicle. Now that I've built it, I'm not sure about it being like a car, and maybe I should have mocked it up as something more like a flying vehicle or a hovercraft. You can see that we also added all of these power conduits running outwards from the central geode out up through the houses in the cliffside. So you can see we use those purple pearlescent frog lights as power sources within the conduits and then used either end crystals or used the lightning rods as the main conduits running that power. All of it, I think, came together real well to show the fusion between both the alien culture and the original native culture and how the land and the village developed over time. Well, that wraps up this tour of the ancestral Pueblo-inspired village and the aliens that came to learn and watch that culture develop. Hopefully this has inspired you to create your own stories using history or archaeology in your own Minecraft world. If you like this video, please take the time to give it a like and make sure to subscribe and click that little bell so you can get notified when I post videos. Also, please leave a comment if you liked or didn't like this video so I know better how I can focus on making the content you most enjoy watching. Thanks, have a good rest of your day. Bye for now.